Hey everyone. All right. Today I am going to be painting on a canvas for the first time. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have prepped it with a couple of coats of Kills 3. I have not heard of anyone using that yet, but when I went to the store to get some Kills, they were out of Kills 2, which is what most people use that I have seen. And so um, I just went ahead and got the Kills 3, decided to try it. This is an 11 by 14 oval. Turn it that way, you can probably tell better. And we'll see. We'll see how this turns out since it's my first time on canvas. I am going to use uh, Purple Twilight. All of these are the Ranger colors. Um, Purple Twilight, Flamingo, and Shell Pink, which I don't know, we'll see. An interesting combination. So. Um, I just I agonized for an hour for some reason about what colors to use. I changed my mind 20 times. Um, I also have my Pinata Brass uh, in the little needle nose applicator bottle. Uh, I've, I've had a few people ask, no, I don't mix it with anything in the bottle. This is just straight Pinata Brass right out of the big bottle of it that I got it in. And I have 91% alcohol today. All right, one of these days I'm going to get around to cleaning my alcohol bottle up. So. All right, um, also, like always, I'm using my Revlon like curling brush hair dryer. I'm still getting a lot of questions about this. The, um, there is a link in the drop down part of the description box, the Amazon link where I got this. Uh, also, some of the other supplies that I use pretty frequently. Um, there's links in there. Um, they are affiliate links, so I do get a small commission off of uh, things that you purchase through my links. So um, I really appreciate all of you that have done that. It's certainly not a way to get rich quick, but every little bit helps, let me tell you. <laughs> As all of you know who are doing art, art supplies are expensive. Uh, all right, I think that's about it for now. Uh, it seemed like there was something else, but I do not know what it was. So if I end up using some other uh, supplies during the course of this, then I will uh, let you know during the voiceover when I get done doing the painting. All right, well, I'm going to get started and I will be back with you all in just a minute. All right, I'm gonna get started on this. Um, let's see. All right, sorry, it, it was several hours ago when I started this, so I can't even remember what I told you. I think I already told you the ink colors, uh, Flamingo, Purple Twilight, and Shell Pink, all of Ranger brand, and then the Pinata Brass, of course. Um, I had you know, been wanting to do this on canvas for quite a while and I'd actually picked up a couple of canvases um, a month or so ago they had some 50% off at Hobby Lobby one day that were shaped ones not just rectangles or squares so I'd picked up a couple of those and you know picked up some kills to get them primered with <laughs> and and then set them back against the wall and that's where they sat for the last month. So I finally got up the the nerve, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I decided to go ahead and do them last night. Uh, I did these, or did this in the style that, one of the styles you all have seen me do before, you know, where it's uh, uh, going from one side to the other. All right, there you see what I did right there. <laughs> That's I, I didn't care on this because I knew I was going to be going back over that part. And plus, it wasn't Yupo, so I didn't think it was going to stain too badly. But uh, that's one of the questions that I get asked a lot is those the little fingers of ink that will run out everywhere. And what happened right there was I got uh, too close too much over my 
ink puddle as I was blowing. I, I just got in too big of a hurry because this is just, you know, was just kind of laying down some initial ink here. Wasn't really painting, painting yet. Um, kind of wanted to get things spread out quickly. So um, that, that was what happened. And that is what will do it. If you lift up your air source too much, if you're using a hair dryer or uh, whatever, um, but if you, uh, let's just say if you're using a hair dryer like mine, if you come in over top of it, then it's going to do that. You're going to have ink just sort of blowing all over the place. You've got to keep your, your dryer, the end of it down very close to your surface. I mean, very close, like, you know, a quarter of an inch from the surface of whatever you're painting on and use the air that sort of reflects back off that surface. You know, okay, so the air comes down and then it spreads out along the surface of your paper or canvas or whatever. And that's the air that you wanna to use to move your ink. That air that's coming from the side so that it's not coming directly over top of it. And that will make a tremendous difference for you if you are having trouble with those little fingers of ink running everywhere, uh, that that will help you more than anything. If you will remember that you wanna use that air that's coming from the side, not air that's coming from directly over top of your ink. All right, so I uh, did like I usually do. I put down the ink, although because I had such a large surface to cover, this was a 11 by 14 canvas and in trying to cover this large of a surface uh, the way that i was planning on painting it i did put down more ink than i normally would at one time plus i wanted it a little dark down there at the bottom but uh, i put down the ink and then the pinata brass or whatever metallic you choose to use um, on top of the ink and then the alcohol and Another thing that I think I've mentioned a time or two, but have not really um, t talked about it very often, but when you are putting your alcohol down, if you are using metallic, um, put your ink, then your metallic, then when you go to put your alcohol down, if you have one of these little applicator bottles like I've got, hold it down low and try to sort of squirt your alcohol up under your ink and metallic. That will lift even more of the metallic up so that it's not sitting down, it doesn't, so much of it doesn't stay sunk down onto your surface. Uh, I, I've, that's really helped me a lot. I didn't start doing that until just a couple of months ago and realized that was really helping with getting the metallic showing up in my paintings was getting down low sort of at an angle and you can kind of see right there what I'm talking about I tried to get it up under the ink and the metallic so that it lifts it and makes it float you know on the top a little bit better so that's there's another tip for you all to try and uh, to see how that works for you, if you're not doing it already, you may, you may be smarter than I am. You may have figured that one out a long time ago. So, um, And that little white thing, I've mentioned it before. I have no idea what it's called. It, it was just a, something that I picked up one day in Hobby Lobby because I thought it looked like something that I could use for painting. I was using the back end of a paintbrush just to uh, to kind of dab in little spots or get something to to move a little bit if I couldn't get it to move where I wanted it to go but this it was just a little two pack of these things it's rounded on one end and pointed on the other and uh, there was you know one this size that I'm using here and then one that was a little bit fatter than that one and they have come in just really really handy with this one thing I noticed about the canvas is um, 
I, it does, you can do wispies on the canvas. I, I didn't have any trouble with that. But it is a little bit harder to move your ink or, or to get it to fill in exactly where you want it to go. It's not that it's hard to move, but it's like the ink and alcohol want to cling to the canvas a little bit more, which makes sense because it's textured. Um, it doesn't flow across the canvas quite as easily as it would on Yupo or craft plastic or something. So just something to keep in mind if you haven't uh, painted on canvas any yet but want to give it a try, just uh, yeah, keep that in mind that it is just a little bit harder to get the ink to flow uh, where you want it to go. It, I had a little bit of a learning curve here with this and trying to get it to move good on the canvas. So, which is another reason <clears throat> to primer your canvas, in my opinion, because that will you know, help a little bit. Had I not, and now this was a pre-primered canvas, but I still went ahead and put two coats of kills on it uh, just because I, I didn't want to lose all of the texture of the canvas, but I did want I didn't want to have a whole lot of tooth for the the ink to get stuck in. You know, I wanted it to be able to move a little bit. So I just you know, me personally, I would recommend for this softer wispy style, um, I would recommend maybe primering your canvas. Um, you don't have to use kills. I don't think it really matters what you use because I have heard all kinds of different things that people have used straight down to just plain old acrylic paint. So just acrylic craft paint even. Just, uh, you know, see what works for you. I, I think I told you this was the Kills 3 that I used. Um, most people use Kills 2, but uh, since the, the hardware store that I had stopped in at was out of kills too, so I just picked up three. And I mean, it works, as far as I can tell, it's it, no worse than the two would have been. It, I thought it was fine. It's very thick though, very, very thick. So you have to be really careful when you are primering your canvas that you don't end up with brush strokes. Now most of them, actually pretty much all of them did smooth out but I was really particular about um, smoothing down my paint so and blending it down good with a blender brush because I wanted it, you know, I didn't want to end up with, uh, with brush strokes in it. Uh, let's see. All right, so you can see now I'm going back and trying to blend the two colors together a little bit. You know, I just went ahead and made my a swath of each and then came back here through the center to uh, to kind of blend it some. You'll see me use this little tool a whole lot more in this painting than I ever have, I think, in any painting. And that was uh, partly because of that, or mostly because of that little bit of difficulty in getting the inks to move as easily on the canvas. They just were not always going where I wanted them to go. Um, although, although that happens on Yupo too, or any other surface you're painting on. Uh, but I did, I did struggle a little bit more with this one just because of that, the tooth of the canvas, wanting to redirect the ink or kind of put a little barrier up where it wouldn't go where I wanted it to. So that's why you'll see me use this a lot more in this painting. Now I started out, when I was blending, I started out just using alcohol and quickly realized that I was losing uh, almost all of my metallic. Now I'm not sure what the deal was when I was doing this. Now you will lose your metallic quite a bit um, if you do a whole lot of blending, but I felt like I was completely losing it. And I mean, it was extremely obvious where I had gone back and done my blending. It was leaving lighter spots. I, I don't know. I, I assume it's probably the difference between 
you know, the polypropylene surfaces uh, <clears throat> and the and a canvas. <clears throat> I'm sorry, all my throat's already getting dry tonight. And this is a long video. I may uh, end up speeding this up a little bit for you all. Uh, because this this did take me quite a while to get this done so but you see here I finally decided to go back and where I wanted to blend it I just used the lighter color which was the flamingo here and uh, put the put just one drop of the metallic one drop of the ink and one drop of the metallic and then just a few drops of alcohol, not a whole lot, because I didn't want to make big sections here. I wanted to start having smaller uh, places instead of really big areas. I didn't want to spread the purple, the purple twilight, all the way up into the flamingo <clears throat> and lose all of my color for that. Was the next video that uh, after this one that you all that I do I will I actually have a new nice new clean bottle for my uh, brass it was kind of funny after I got done with this I just had um, you know the brass stuck all over the outside of the bottle and all over the needle nose tip of it was just gobbed up on there and so I decided to clean it, and somehow or other, I managed to pull the needle part right out of the top of the bottle. <laughs> Not sure how I did that, so so I had to swap out for a different bottle. And so hopefully <laughs> it'll work good. Um, I stuck the the little needle nose back down in it, but I'm afraid it'll leak around it now. So um, I didn't want to didn't want to use that. I just salvaged it into another bottle. Um, for those of you who are listening to this, uh, this, I think I mentioned in the intro, uh, this hair dryer, this is one of the things I get the most questions about, but I do, in every video I do, I always have it listed, um, with my Amazon affiliate links down there in the drop down part of the description box. Uh, because uh, so many people have been wanting to get this same dryer that uh, I, I try to make sure that I put it put the link for it in every one and the links that are down there they are affiliate links and I really really appreciate you all that have um, bought some of your supplies going through my affiliate links I'm um, thing I've said before it's you certainly aren't going to get well not me anyway not going to get rich off of it but it does help a little bit um, every little bit helps it's a great way for you all to to help support me um, and doing these videos and it doesn't cost you a thing other than you're just buying your supplies anyway so um, I really do appreciate it because it does um, help a little bit keep me in supplies for for doing these videos Oh, what I was getting ready to say too was uh, uh, everything that's in those links are things that I have used myself and that I use frequently myself and uh, things that I really like. I will never just randomly put, you know, something that I have not tried myself in there uh, just to try to get somebody to click on the a link that uh, you know I might get a small commission off of I that I will not ever do that to you all if it's listed down there then it is something that I have used the um, uh, all of these supplies all of the Amazon affiliate links uh, I have used every one of those things and frequently use every one of those things so um, you know you can if if that sets your mind at ease any about whether or not you would want to use that particular thing uh, just know that that's 
I, you know, if I have it down there, then I've used it. Now, with Arteza, I obviously have not used everything in their, uh, on their website, but, um, the thing, the, the Arteza products that I have used, I, I really did like, and I, some of those, I'm wanting to try some more of those, but it's, I just put the general affiliate link for Arteza in there rather than the, um, just listing the, the few things of theirs that I've tried so far. Uh, that way, it's, I, I don't know, I, it's a little bit easier for me that way. They, Arteza doesn't sell a whole lot of things for alcohol ink painting. They do have canvases, and they have alcohol markers uh, that I have not tried yet. But uh, other than that, they don't have a whole lot yet for alcohol inks. Most of their products are drawing and um, acrylic painting products. So if you do any of that, you know, it might be worth checking out some of their stuff. But I can't give you, I can't tell you about most of that other than the ready to pour pouring acrylic paints, which uh, I did enjoy playing around with. And I'll probably do another video just using some more of those one day soon. Now, one thing that I did not do on this painting that I ended up wishing that I had was I did not try to make sure that I pushed the ink over the edge. I, you know, tried to get it right up to the edge. In fact, you'll see I'll use this little tool some right there to make sure that I didn't leave any little white patches right at the corner of the canvas there, right on the edge. But I didn't try to push any over. Now, there was a few places that it ran over anyway. And my my thought was, when I realized what it was doing, I thought, well, I'll get back with some alcohol and just clean that up and then maybe put an extra little coat of kills or something around that edge to um, cover it up completely where wherever I wasn't able to to get it all up with alcohol but I decided before I did that that I wanted to um, to fill it in instead of taking it out uh, I wanted it to look like the ink had just flowed over the edge of the canvas so that is one reason that this video ended up a little bit longer than a lot of them because I did uh, go back and video that I had you know thought I was done and I'd set it down and wasn't going to show you all you know me cleaning the edges of the canvas was just going to tell you what I had done and then the more I looked at it the more I decided it would look better if I did it around the edges too then if somebody does not want to try to frame it or you know in any way mat it or anything that's going to hide the edges uh, at least it will look pretty on the edge and i actually i really like the way it looks uh, with it coming over the edge and you'll see that later on in the video how i went back and uh, i matched that in got it to to look like it had just sort of flowed over the edge rather than me doing it separately but next time if i do another one like this uh, and i probably will i did like i really like the look of it on the canvas i liked the the textured look that it left on it but um, i will try to push more ink over the edge as i'm working I, I was actually kind of careful not to push a lot of ink over the edge because I didn't want to have to clean it all off. And that was something I ended up regretting. So, all right, so I started with the shell pink. I tried to not use quite as much of the brass with it, um, but I still ended up having... Uh, just a ton of brass in there. The lighter the color, the more you're going to be able to see the brass 
which when the lights on it is just gorgeous but when the lights when you don't have your light at the right angle it just it kind of looks like a it's just sort of a brownish color on your canvas so um, or or your paper whatever surface you're on so I was trying to not get quite so much of that on there but I still ended up getting a lot but it's gorgeous when the light shines on it though it is it's just absolutely beautiful when the light hits it from the right angle you can really see all the the shimmer from the pinata brass Now, part of the time on this, I, because this was canvas and because I was working with large areas, I did switch it over to uh, heat every now and then to get it to dry a little bit faster. I, I didn't do that when I was doing the wispy part at the edge much, but uh, this part back towards the back <clears throat> where the most of the ink was, I did... Uh, turn the the heat on once I had it spread out to pretty much where I kind of wanted it I flipped it over on high heat for a little while to uh, to get it to dry a little quicker because I did want it to be dry fairly good before I put the next color down one day I'm going to try one with it not dry maybe see about uh, blending some colors uh, while both colors are still wet with alcohol rather than uh, the way I usually do it and have it uh, completely dry before I go to the next color. You can see I was having a hard time getting that little spot to dry. I would kind of gotten a lot of <laughs> a lot of brass right there and it does not dry quickly uh, as as you've probably discovered by now if you have already started doing your own alcohol ink paintings that uh, the metallics tend to make your ink stay tacky for quite a while so uh, yeah don't stick your fingers in it <laughs> which I've done many times uh, we'll just forget and grab hold of the edge of the paper. I actually did it on this canvas, too. I <laughs> grabbed hold of the, the edge of the canvas and got ink all over my fingers. The, that's, I think it was Zoe, my granddaughter Zoe. She looked at it, and I had it turned sideways, you know, long ways, where it was wide, and she's like, ooh, that's pretty. And then she said, turn it the other way. So I held it up for her. And she said, yep, it looks like an Easter egg that's been dip dyed. <laughs> okay, so we're starting Easter early here, I guess. This is my, this will be my Easter egg. <laughs> I'm wondering if my uh, uh, bottle that had the brass in it was already leaking. If that's one reason that I kept getting it all over my hands and that it had run so bad on the tip and just built up hugely around the, the base of the tip. Uh, it may have already been leaking around the, the tip a little. It may have been why it came out so easily when I was trying to clean it. Thing was loose in there. I keep telling myself I'm going to get a little notebook so that when I'm going through people's questions in the comments um, here and on Facebook so that I'll, I'll have that sitting there with me so I can make sure that I mention it on here. So while I always answer your questions on there, um, it's, I mean, I whatever your question is, I guarantee you you're not the only one who has had that problem and might might want to know the answer as well. And so I keep trying to remember to get a little notebook to 
to write that down. And I keep forgetting to get the notebook. Uh, having the girls in the store, I'm lucky to manage to get food for us to get home with. It gets a little nerve-wracking sometimes. So as I came up on this one here, I, I did start trying to um, keep some of that ink kind of thinned out there towards the edges <clears throat> because I I did want it to, you know, fade out into the white rather than, you know, having a... I wanted my wispy edges there, but I wanted the ink to get a little bit lighter colored even before it completely faded out. So I had tried to use just a little bit less ink and just a little bit more alcohol through there to kind of thin it down a little bit more. I also cannot remember if I, I think I actually mentioned this in, uh, at the end because I did, as I finished up, um, when I, right when I finished this, I went ahead and did sort of a, a little outro for you all to record that at the time so I could just go back over this longest part with the voiceover. And I think I mentioned there, but just in case, I'll go ahead and mention it again. I did finally join the 21st century and got a, an Instagram. So <laughs> any of you all who are interested in following me on Instagram, uh, it is Artfully Abstract by Lori. So I would love to see you on there. I know some of you have uh, already have already found me. There's a few of you that have, uh, but I'm... Uh, look forward to, to seeing some more of you there. And if um, some of you all have some of your art on Instagram, if you'll let me know, you know, I'll be happy to follow your page on Instagram, give you a, an extra follower. I like seeing what you all have to do too. That's, that's one of the things about this is you all get to see a lot of what I do, but I don't get to see that much of what you all do. So, you know, if you have an Instagram page, let me know, and I will, I'll definitely go and, uh, and check it out. I feel like there's something else that um, I wanted to be sure to mention, but I'm not entirely sure what it was. Hmm. So, um, I also, I know I mentioned at the end of this, I did, I decided uh, very early on on this one that I was going to resin it, but I probably won't show you all the, I probably won't video resining this because I'm not going to embellish it any. I liked this one just the way it was, so I'm not going to try and add anything else to it just do a, a clear coat of resin but it will I still have to seal it first I want to go ahead and do the Camar varnish and the UV protectant spray layers before uh, just for that extra layer of protection since these alcohol inks are so prone to, to fading with the sunlight uh, the more that you can keep on them to protect them the better in my opinion I mean, especially if when you're selling your work, you don't want to, you don't want to sell something to someone that's going to fade out and lose its color, you know, within just a couple of years. And that's, that's just really disappointing to a buyer. So, and that's uh, not the kind of, not the kind of artist that I want to be where people buy your artwork and then they have to trash it within a couple of years because it lost all its color. So I'll do everything I can to try to protect the color of these. 
So here you can see I started going much, much lighter with the ink there, just a drop or two in each place. And yeah, quite a bit of alcohol too, because this is where I, I wanted to start <clears throat> spreading it out, getting it a little bit wispy around the edges. And now you can see, I, I know I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to again, how I jump around from side to side. It's back and forth, left, right, up, down. I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, I don't just circle around my ink puddle. Now you can do that and you can get some really cool effects doing that. You can get kind of a rose looking shape. Uh, and it's it's very pretty, but uh, that's not what I usually want to go for. So I don't do that circular motion around my ink puddle. I'm always just kind of jumping around everywhere with the with the brush or the the brush <laughs> the hair dryer. It's a shame I can't just ask you all right now if you would rather I just fast forwarded through the rest of this or just keep on rambling on and letting you all listen to me for the next, I don't even know how long that this section goes on. I don't think that there's really anything else that I can tell you all about this right here. So I think I am going to, um, kind of, I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. Uh, I won't do it super fast, but that way you all won't be sitting here for quite so long. Although I know most of you do the same thing that I do and I'm constantly jumping ahead on videos. I rarely watch the whole thing and I can tell from my analytics that you all rarely watch the whole thing too because <laughs> it tells me like how many minutes you know the video the average amount of minutes that people actually spend watching the videos and it's you know way less than how long the videos actually are so um i am going to go ahead and speed up a little of this see if i can knock down just a a few minutes of it anyway because right now it's an hour and a half long so um all right well i'm going to stop my talking for right now and i will rejoin you when i get ready to do the edges on this to kind of explain what i was doing there
All right. Well, that managed to knock about 15 minutes off the video length, so <laughs> that helped a little bit. I'm sorry this one was so long, y'all. All right, so I, you know, had never done anything quite like this before, and I wasn't entirely sure how to go about it because I didn't want it to bleed back uh, onto what I'd already done, but I also didn't want it super dark. So I, I took my little brush here. This is just a, um, a little watercolor brush. I think it's a 10 0. And I mixed the ink with some alcohol in the, the cup there. And then realized really quickly that that was actually going to be a little too light. Uh, so I did kind of, you know, go on and put some down but it wasn't just going to be too light uh, I was missing the metallic too as you'll see I figured out that I needed to do something about getting some metallic on there if I wanted it to blend with the other sorry the, the tip was stopped up a little bit I was trying to get it to come out without squirting it everywhere so yeah, I'm sorry. I got. I tried to be real conscious of where I was working at for this, but it took me just a minute here to realize that it was not in frame. There you go. <laughs> so I just went through and put little squiggles and you know mess here and there with the the little brush or with the gold on the brush or the brass. Uh, you know, I wasn't trying to make it look good. Was I just wanted to get some of it on there. And then knowing that as I went through to put the ink on, the color ink on, that it would just sort of blend that in just a little bit. Um, if you do this, you know, make sure... Yeah, I stuck my hand in the wet ink there. Um, if you do this, make sure you pay attention to where your uh, colors stop up you know towards the t if you do like i did and leave a little bit of negative space here you know you don't want to run on around the side with color where you have no color on top of the canvas so just be mindful of that not to go beyond where your the color on top of the canvas goes see i just put a few blobs in here and there um and then I, I went back and started filling in with a little bit more of the purple twilight. Although, like I mentioned before, I realized real quickly that was going to be much lighter than what I wanted to do. And so I... Actually, here shortly after I start painting with the Purple Twilight again, I put some more ink in the cup, trying to darken it up. And even that still was not quite dark enough. And I, I actually ended up just using the ink straight out of the bottle because I couldn't, it just wasn't looking right with as dark as I had gotten it on the canvas on the top of the canvas it just wasn't looking right with it so light colored on the sides i really did want it to be you know very close to or exactly the same shades that it was on top and as you're doing that too you know watch where your colors change on top of your canvas because you are going to want to make sure that you change colors on the side there I went just a little bit on over so that I could get a little bit of a blend even on my edge when I went back with the flamingo because I wanted that purple twilight and flamingo to blend a little bit even there on the edge so that it would match the top. this was it was it was very awkward trying to paint this where you all could see it because i was having to actually keep it that my my camera is facing me and when i'm working so i had to tilt it towards the camera which meant i was tilting the edge of the painting away from me to make sure that you all could see it so 
I was just trying to lean way over and, and see what I was doing. Now you'll see me try a few different things during this because this was a, a new thing for me. I had not ever considered how I needed to try to, you know, do alcohol inks on the edge of a canvas like this. So this was a new one on me. I, I had a few different uh, things that I tried. <laughs> Yeah, there's where I, I realized that it was coming out much, much lighter than I wanted. And I, I hate that I wasted so much ink before I realized uh, because, you know, I didn't want to pour it back into the bottle or anything. I had actually, I'd gotten some brass in it anyway. I didn't want to pour it back in the, in the bottle like that. I could let it just dry up in that cup. But I've done that before and... Um, I always end up, I don't know, it, it just never works right for me after I reconstitute it with alcohol. Seems like it, it tends to look a little bit grainy. And if I forget to cover it real tightly with something, then it's got dust, dirt, and fuzz and things in it too. Um, one thing that I might recommend if you do this is getting a little bit bigger brush. I thought about it several times while I was doing this. Uh, the only reason that I didn't switch to a bigger size brush was that I did not want to get the ink back up over the edge onto the top of the canvas because I didn't want it to start eating away at the ink that was already there uh, from you know that I had painted earlier. So I did stick with this small one, but I think that next time I might use a larger one. Um, although you'll see when I eventually pick up a bottle of ink and just start dripping it on the canvas, it uh, the small one worked out fine for that. And at one point, you'll actually see me get a Q-tip and try to use a Q-tip to sort, and that actually worked really well. Um, I put, just dripped some ink on a Q-tip and kind of dabbed it and rolled it and, you know, moved it along through there because I didn't, I didn't want it to have a smooth look because the, the painting on the top of the canvas doesn't have the smooth look. You know, there's all kinds of shading that's going on there. So I wanted that same look on the edges as well. Even, I mean, even through the the video, you all can probably see kind of what I'm talking about with the, how much lighter that the edge looks. And right now, there's just really no shading to it, except for the very few places where some of the ink ran over. It just... I, it just kind of, it just looked too smooth. It didn't look right. There was not a good flow from the top of the painting down the sides the way it was. And that was, even if I tried to put it on a little bit heavy, of course, all it did was just run. So that, that was no help whatsoever. Yeah, so here I am with the Q-tip <laughs> trying that. And even with that, I realized that part of my problem was my ink. I should not have watered it down with alcohol. I should have just gone with straight ink to start with, and it would have worked much better. So that's what, uh, I just held it over the cup, but I just dripped a couple of drops of just straight ink on my Q-tip after that. You can see how much better it's coming out. You can already see how it got darker as soon as I started doing it that way. It, the color blended so much better with what was on the painting. Plus, I was able to give it that more kind of mottled 
layered look that you get on the top. That was, I would kind of roll it along there just to get the ink spread out and then, uh, you know, go back and dab over top of it to do that. And yeah, there you go. I mean, there was at some point I finally got frustrated and really just started pouring it on, which actually worked out really well. And that's what I continued to do uh, after this was just drip the ink directly onto the edge of the canvas out of the bottle and then use the brush or the q-tip to move it around it was there's so many little creases around the edge of this uh, uh, oval shaped canvas like this so if you're working on a circle or an oval or something, there's so many little gathers in there that, that it was a little tricky at times to make sure I didn't leave any little white spots where some of the folds were in the canvas from it being gathered up around the frame. You can see how much better it's matching the the top. Well, if I ever turn it back around where you can actually see the top, but uh, it's the color looks much, much better. Almost an exact match now for what it is on the top. And the places that I had put down the brass, I kind of, I would take my Q-tip here or um, I did pick the brush up and start using the brush again on part of it, but um, I kind of went back over that to loosen it up a little bit so that I didn't have just blobs here and there. I, I tried to spread out a little what was on it, which once again, just to make it kind of match a little bit better with what was on top of the canvas, the actual painting. And there's one of the, I mean, reasons that this turned out taking so long was this. I was trying to be very careful, make sure that I didn't have any little white spots around the top edge or around this bottom edge. Because if someone wanted to hang it directly on a wall, you know, you just don't want to have white spots that jump out at you if you can help it. So... Um, this this did take a while. It was a little bit longer process than just doing it on a piece of you know, Yupo or similar because uh, you don't have all these little nitpicky things that you have to deal with there. Now you can see how good the the edge matches the actual painting. The the purple twilight part is just matches perfectly now with the, the little bit heavier ink application that I got on there. This is where I was trying to get some of the brass to move around a little. I had that big splotch of it right there that needed to get spread out some anyway. He said the next time I do one like this shouldn't take as long because you know this was the first time I'd done it so this was a little bit of a learning process and trial and error for me on the best way to do certain things so that that did kind of take me a little bit longer than it might have otherwise. And that was, I got out of frame again, but yeah, I was just trying to, to dry the edge really good there. I didn't want to, I knew I was going to have to have part of that purple down on my pad that I was working on, and I didn't want to 
have all my ink soak off. So I just went around the edges with the heat for just a minute to get it just as dry as I could without, you know, waiting for a long time. That was just a little alcohol that I put on my brush. was just trying to get a little of the purple off of it. But I didn't really care if I got all the purple off or not. So uh, I just squirted a few drops on and wiped it off just to get most of it. Didn't care if I got it all because this is where I was going to start trying to blend the um, flamingo color in with the purple twilight. So it didn't bother me if there was a little... That little jar you just saw me dip in, that's just alcohol. Just straight alcohol. Because I had decided that was going to be the best way to do this, was just to put the ink straight on the edge and then just get a tiny bit of alcohol on my brush to move it around if I needed to. You can see I'll, I'll, you know, tip the canvas down some. That's, you know, I was trying to keep that really close eye on where the the color change was on top of the canvas to make sure that I matched it up on the sides with it as well. So I'm sorry this is so long. I hope that y'all aren't bored to death. Those of you who have hung in there with me watching this process drag on and on, I'm really sorry. I probably should have just sped up the whole thing, but uh, but then there are there are those who want to see the whole process, you know, and uh, so even though I sped up a little bit of it, it it wasn't a whole lot. So, uh, and I had already pretty much explained everything, and you all have seen me do what I was doing there. You'd already seen me do, so uh, hopefully uh, that's, that won't be a problem for anyone that I sped up that little bit anyway. So that is the shell pink there. And uh, was trying to be a little bit cautious with it because I didn't want to get a whole bunch of it up at that top edge because I knew that uh, I needed to try to fade that out on the edge just like it was on the the surface. So I was trying to make sure I didn't get too, too much of it. Uh, up too high. So there, see, I just, um, I think I added just a tiny bit more of the gold in there, or the brass, um, and really kind of tried to scrub it around, because that was kind of the way it looked up at the top, and then uh, just started using just the alcohol and softening that up all the way up through there, trying to kind of make it look like a, a wispy part, and have it fade out as it went up. Because, I, I mean, I couldn't put... A bunch of alcohol on there and blow it with the dryer it was going to blow it up onto the the top of the canvas where I didn't want it. So I'd just gone back there and was doing a little more blending and a little more you know modeling it up a little bit and anywhere there was sort of a clump of brass I was trying to to loosen that up and spread it out a little and then just drying this side so I can flip it over and do the flamingo and the shell pink on the other side of it I did not get that actually I did I started I didn't get that blended really good right there but I think it was just a trick of the light because 
it looks blended well when I'm holding the, the painting in my hands. So uh, I think that must have just been a trick of the light there. This side had just a little bit more um, ink that had run over the edges than the other side, which helped a little bit. I had the, the little cup that's closest to me, that one, is just the alcohol. Uh, the other one you'll see me every now and then go to that's a little bit further away. That's the one that has my just some pinata brass squirted out into that cup to where I can get just a dab of it when I need to rather than putting a, a drip on there where it's going to be too much. Then once again, trying to make sure that I got all the little edges because if you turn the canvas and look at it from a different way, sometimes you'll see a little white spot that was hidden before. Just the way that the the weave is on the canvas, that the those little edges could get hard to see. They could get hidden behind things sometimes. And look at that. Woo, I had to grab that quick because... It was going to run all the way around the canvas, and that would have been a disaster. Sorry, I know I sound like I'm half asleep right now. It's getting late. I'm getting tired. So... So if I sound awfully just blah and out of it, because we're getting here closer to the end anyway, that's why. It's not too terribly much more to go. Just did the same thing here with uh, using only the alcohol. So I got up here to the top and just, um, you know, softened that and spread it out but I was still real careful to try and stay with where the line of it was on the top, which is why you'll see me work back down a little bit sometimes, uh, trying to push some of that color back down just to make sure I didn't have too much. And up there, I was trying to make sure I got all of the color off, that any of it that I had come up too far with wasn't there, especially where you saw that little drip go running around the edge. This is just where I was along that bottom corner where I could still see some little things. I just used some gold to try to fill in, or brass. I, don't, I might as well just call it gold <laughs> because that's exactly what color it looks like. Uh, but that was, uh, you know, I just used that to try and fill in. So you can see what a great job that did with that brush and just squirting the ink on with making it blend almost exactly like what was on the top, even though I did not do it at the same time. And I just thought that that looked so much better like that than it would have had I left it um, the other way. So, all right, well, it's about time for the outro, so I'll leave you all to it. All right, there you go, the, the mostly finished product. I decided I am definitely going to resin over this one. Uh, it'll really just bring out the colors even more and that gold will just shine like crazy under there or the pinata brass that I used anyway. So that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Hope you learned something that it was beneficial to you. I have to say thank you a thousand times, actually 2,500 times, because that is what my subscriber count is up to. And I actually think that um, 
there's, I think it was like two, 2510 maybe the last time I looked at it. So I just absolutely cannot thank you all enough. I'll, I'll have to pick a number one day soon and try to do another giveaway um, to celebrate when I get to a, another certain number of subscribers. But you all rock. I'll tell you, I, you have the greatest comments, compliments for me, for my art. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It is, uh, it just moves me. I, you know, feel like this little uh, hick hillbilly woman from the backwoods of North Carolina. And it just amazes me that you all are interested that there's this many people interested in watching me do what I do. So I, I really appreciate it and so many of you all have become like friends to me and I just uh, I love it. I feel like we're a family here, a big old group of friends hanging out and I, I truly appreciate it. And uh, once again, don't forget, I am more than happy to help answer any of your questions. If you're struggling with a specific thing in your painting, um, let me know. There is an email address on the About tab on my channel's homepage. Uh, that's artfullyabstractbylori at gmail.com. And you can email me there if you think it's something that is going to be longer than what I might be able to answer in a comment. And uh, I am more than happy to try to help out in any way I can. Uh, also, for those of you on Instagram, I did finally get my Instagram account up and running. I may have mentioned that. Uh, a little bit earlier. I can't remember now. Um, so, uh, just, uh, yeah, give me a follow on Instagram if you'd like. And it is uh, the Artfully Abstract by Lori uh, on Instagram as well. So, I'd love to see you all there too. All right. Well, thank you all for watching again. I will um, be back soon. I may show the process of resining this. I don't know. I'm, it, it's a little bit, to me, it's boring for you all to watch because I can tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some tape around the back side of it and put some push pins in it to hold it up and then I'm going to pour resin on top of it and let it dry. So, uh, it's not, not a complicated process. So, I will try to remember though to show you all in another video what this looks like once I get it completely finished because I do need to let this dry for at least a few days and then um, I am still going to seal it with some of the Camar varnish and the UV protectant spray that I use even though I'm going to put resin on it because I'm still I'm not sure if the resin will protect what's or protect from UV rays what's under it or if it only protects itself from yellowing so um, anyway, I'll uh, hopefully be able to give you all a peek at this in the future, and uh, it'll be completely finished at that time. But I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with you all soon. Bye!